which is a good holiday, but actually not exciting. So that's kind of the wrong word for it now that I think about it. Um, anyway, um, on behalf of the mission committee, um, we're going to, I think Matt three weeks ago mentioned that we're going to be coming up every month now to kind of give you an update of what's going on in the world, um, what's going on in missions, what's going on with our missionaries that we support. And so I'm here today. Um, it happens to be the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. So um, it's a really, I'm really thankful to have the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, there's a lot that you could say about uh, persecution for Christians around the world. So I'm going to try and go really quickly through um, a little bit, just at a glance. But if you have any questions at all about um, Christians being persecuted around the world, um, talk to someone in the mission committee. If you don't know who's in the mission committee, talk to me, and I'll direct you. Um, so I'm not going to read everything, but um, it, Syria's been in the news a lot lately um, with all the refugees. Um, it's, I'm, I'm really going to go really fast. Um, China, um, I think a lot of people know that um, a lot of Christians in China have been um, imprisoned, and a lot of Christian leaders are persecuted regularly. Um, Iraq, ISIS, I mean, everywhere in the Middle East where there's terrorism, including a lot of northern Africa, um, there's these terrorist groups that go around and they will just line people up and ask them to say, you know, um, parts of the Quran, and if they don't know it, they'll kill them right on the spot. It's, um, it, it's, it's something we can't really imagine. Um, in Eritrea, um, reports of 1,200 to 3,000 people are imprisoned on religious grounds. Um, I just mentioned Northern Africa, Nigeria, um, and Sudan. Um, com Christian communities have endured attacks on religious buildings. Um, that's also true in Egypt. Um, tons of churches have been burned down. Um, I wanted to go through really quickly through this stuff because I want to share a personal story um, from Indonesia. Um, Claudia and I went on a world trip um, four years ago now, um, <laughs> and, and one of the places we visited was Indonesia, and Indonesia has the largest Muslim population in the entire world, um, I mean the largest in, for one country in the world, um, and, but there are Christians there, um, and uh, that's where Indonesia is. It's, this, it's made up of hundreds and hundreds of islands. It's the fourth largest population in the world, I think, fourth, yeah. Um, that's me interviewing a guy, um, he's a Christian, I was going to go back, um, yeah, this is delayed, sorry. Um, so anyway, the story is, we went to this house, uh, we went to this, we didn't know where we were going, um, the people we were with spoke very little English, their English is better than my Indonesian, but <laughs> not good, um, and we had no idea where we were going, and we were driving for like hours and hours, sometimes days, um, without knowing where we were going, and we'd show, we, one time we showed up at this house, and um, this was a little like church community. They didn't have an actual church, so they just met in their home, and they listened to a radio program, a Christian radio program, um, but we, we, you know, we showed up, and we take pictures, and, and shoot some videos of them and everything, and then we start hearing their story, um, and, um, it, it, it's, it's insane that this, this woman in the blue shirt, um, she's just weeping as she was telling us her story of how basically she lived in another province in Indonesia and her neighbors just came one day and burned their house down and basically said, if you come back, we'll kill you. And she had to flee and lose her. And the way they pass land, it's really hard to buy land. They pass it to their families. So she's just gone and has nothing and has to go. And then she found these other Christians. Um, the guy, um, is he not in the picture? Or is, oh, the guy in the leather jacket? The white shirt, yeah. Yeah. Um, he also had a very similar story where he had lost his whole um, livelihood, everything he knew um, because of his community. Uh, it's, it's just something we can't really picture or imagine, um, but there's a lot of people around the world being, being persecuted just for what they believe, um, and we wanted to join with the rest of, you know, uh, the Christian community today to, to acknowledge this holiday and, um, and uh, pray for the church, so Kristen's going to come up and do a prayer if you could join us. 
Oh, sorry, Chris and Anjo are going to come up and do a prayer. I will lead us in the prayer for the persecuted church around the world, and then Joe will follow up with our congregational prayer. So would you pray with me, please? <clears throat> God, our hearts are burdened by the stories of persecution that your followers around the world face. We lift in prayer those whose governments have created laws that make it easy for the state to oppress, abuse, or even kill those who belong to religious minorities. We pray for the millions around the world who have fled their homes because their religion puts them under threat. We grieve the places on the globe which where our faith was born that are now practically emptied of a Christian presence. We lift up the millions of people who are without homes, who are traumatized and grief-stricken in the wake of violence and terrorism. We pray for those who will be killed if they remain in their homes, and so they flee. We lift in prayer Christians threatened by Boko Haram attacks in Africa or severe state pressure in Iran and Saudi Arabia. We lift in prayer those in Syria whose communities have been decimated who have no home to which to return. We pray for those who have remained in their homelands, living under unstable or unfriendly governments. We think of church leaders who are placed under house arrest, detained or fined. We think of recent converts who are estranged from their families and who are unfairly accused of crimes. Give them courage, Lord, and protect them. We pray for faithful people in countries that are maybe a bit more stable but still not free. We pray for their strength as they commit to the difficult but faithful work of making a change. We pray for advocates and organizers and prayer warriors who are working toward freedom in their countries. God, we lift in prayer those who threaten, oppress, and even kill those who follow you. We pray for their hearts of stone to be turned to hearts of flesh. We pray that they set aside their evil ways and come to know the saving truth and the renewing hope of the good news of Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from your love. In this strong hope, we offer our prayers. As we gather here, we want to praise your name, Lord. We praise you for your wonderful words given to us so long ago. Yet it is that what we need right to hear right now most. We need to hear what you have instructed your people to do so long ago. And yet we have gone so far away from it, drifting away from you. We want to praise you for not punishing us for what we deserve to have. Praise you for your compassion on us, for giving us our daily needs and getting us through. We confess, Lord, that we have sinned, sinned against you, sinned against each other, not done what you wanted us to do at times, not had the right frame of heart to carry out your will, or not spoken up when we should have to glorify your kingdom. Help us, Lord. Help us to give us the strength we need to do your will. If it is to speak, then give us words. If it is called to action, then give us the heart to do it. If it is to keep calm and listen, then open our minds to hear it. If it is to have patience, then give us the peace that all is right. Lord, we give you thanks for everyone here. Thanks for the freedom we have to know that you are here with us too. Thanks for your instructions that we could read this week. Thanks for the work we could do, not only in our daily work, but in our free time, and for the work done here at the church, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this things that you have done for us. And we ask for guidance through this coming week, for wisdom, but also for the insurance that what happens here is your will. For you have already decided the outcome of the election, Lord. And for this country's entire fate has already been written down and you have decided it. We pray now for Dee Borman as her test came back and it is cancerous, Lord, and that she needs more tests and treatment 
We ask for healing there, Lord, for B, and we ask for guidance, but not only guidance for the doctors, but also for her and her family, Lord. And we now, too, think especially of Steve Tiesinga, as too, as he has had malaria. We pray that healing will become because he was medevac to Nairobi now and is in critical care where his oxygen levels are low and that he needs strength, Lord. He needs strength, and we pray for improvement there. In this we pray. Amen.